Growing up, I didn't have a good relationship with the Uncharted series. I always thought it was an overpraised gaming franchise that nobody would ever shut up about. However, after watching my friend play Uncharted 2 for perhaps 10 hours straight, I became interested in both the first three games because of it. After finishing the first Uncharted, I thought it was a fun experience, but once I started getting into the second game, I found it difficult to return to the first one. That's still the case today for me, so don't go into this review expecting me to be overly positive. With all that said, let's move on to the review. Uncharted Drake's Fortune is a game developed by Naughty Dog and was released on November 19, 2007, exclusively for the PlayStation 3. The story follows an adventurer named Nathan Drake who discovers his ancestor Francis Drake's burial chest in the middle of the ocean. Inside the chest he doesn't find his ancestor, but rather Francis Drake's long lost journal. This journal is essential in finding the lost treasure known as El Dorado that other people are also interested in, such as the game's main antagonists Gabriel Roman and Atok Navarro. Nathan Drake's main goal is to find El Dorado before the enemy does and along with him on his adventure is the journalist Elena Fisher, as well as Nathan's old mentor, Victor Sullivan. The story is quite simple yet also very intriguing. There are a few twists along the way, though some are not as impactful as others. So the plot is fairly decent, but what about the characters? Thankfully, I think it's safe to say that the main protagonists are very likeable. Much like Indiana Jones, Nathan Drake is a skilled explorer who can be witty at times, but he still knows when to act serious. Journalist Elena Fisher is a strong female character who puts her life on the line just to get an interesting news story. She's also a very good love interest for Nate. Finally, Nate's mentor Victor Sullivan is for the most part used as a comic relief character, but he's still helpful when he needs to be. While the main protagonists are great, I unfortunately can't say the same for the villains. Gabriel Roman has barely any lines and when he does speak, he's extremely boring to listen to. I can say the same for Atok Navarro, even more so in fact. The best villain in the game is probably Eddie Raja, whom while still not being much interesting at least adds a little more spice and personality to the game. Don't mess with Eddie Raja! The gameplay consists of cover-based shooting, climbing and puzzle solving. Cover-based shooting is self-explanatory as it means you hide behind cover while shooting at other enemies. Enemies usually hide behind cover as well meaning you have to wait before attacking them. It's fun near the beginning of the game but gets very repetitive after a while. The climbing gets somewhat repetitive but not to the same extent and is enjoyable for the most part. Puzzle solving might be the best gameplay aspect. There are many interesting puzzles to solve and this is where Francis Drake's journal comes in handy as it gives you hints on how to solve them more easily. The puzzles aren't too frequent meaning they don't get very repetitive unlike the other gameplay styles. The graphics are obviously dated nowadays as the game got released almost 10 years ago, but I assume they looked very good back then. There are vibrant colors and great attention to detail such as getting soaked after swimming in water. While the graphics look nice, I will have to say that a lot of the same visual elements repeat themselves throughout the game. You spend most of the time in lush green jungles and dark caverns and there's not enough variety or visual appeal to make me excited when visiting these different locations. Another thing to notice that while the game was impressive for its time, the technical capabilities just doesn't compare to what the sequel managed to deliver. Uncharted 2 has tons of incredible action set pieces that push the PS3's limitations to the fullest, and it was released only two years after the first one. Meanwhile, Drake's Fortune only has one slightly memorable set piece, which is the one where you run across the collapsing wooden planks. Even so, I can't allow myself to unfairly criticize this game's performance because of what the sequel managed to accomplish. The original Uncharted was still quite impressive for its time, it's just that the sequel exceeded all expectations. Listening to the soundtrack, I'd say it's pretty good. The music fits the game's adventurous theme and every tune feels natural. Most tracks aren't very memorable since their purpose is to be atmospheric and therefore sound like background music, but that's completely fine as this game heavily focuses on the atmosphere. What helps the soundtrack even more is that the main theme is fantastic. It's one of the most iconic themes in gaming and makes me appreciate the game's soundtrack even more. In conclusion, Uncharted Drake's Fortune isn't such a good game. The gameplay is repetitive and is only redeemed by its interesting puzzles and somewhat enjoyable climbing mechanics. The story, while being simple, does a great job at immersing you into the experience, which makes you want to complete the quest. The main protagonists are all likeable, though I unfortunately can't say the same for the bland and unoriginal villains. The game looks nice, but I feel there's not enough variety in the visuals to make the different locations more exciting to visit. The soundtrack fits the atmosphere very well and the main theme is undoubtedly a modern classic. My biggest complaint with this game is how repetitive the experience feels as a whole, because both the gameplay and visuals are quite repetitive. 
Seriously, this is the shortest game in the series at about 8 hours and yet it feels longer than the other games in the franchise. This makes the game feel like an endurance test at times rather than being an enjoyable experience throughout. During this review I've been very harsh to what many consider to be an amazing game. You may dislike me for having this opinion, but at the end of the day, I'm just being honest with myself. I'm not telling anyone not to get this game. In fact, getting this game might be beneficial, just so you'll have an even greater experience with the sequels. Even though most of you probably disagree with my views on this game, I think most of you will agree when I state that Uncharted Drake's Fortune is the weakest game in the saga. It hasn't aged that well compared to its fantastic sequels and I'm looking forward to reviewing them too someday.